everyone, in today's video I finally have an updated skin retouching tutorial for you guys. So the skin retouching method that I'm going to teach you today is called frequency separation and I really like to use this method of retouching because it retains skin texture so retouching still looks quite natural and real. And once you get the hang of it and practice a little bit, it's also really easy to do. So we're going to jump straight into it. I have this photo that I took in a studio that I wanted to use for today's example. And the first thing we're going to do is create our frequency separation layers. So in order to do that, we're going to duplicate our background layer twice by using the shortcut Control or Command J. So I'm just duplicating that twice. Once we've done that, we're going to make the top layer invisible and select our first layer copy. So in this case, it's called layer one. So we are going to create our color layer by blurring this image. So we're gonna head over to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And I might just zoom into the image just a little bit more since we are only focusing on the face for this photo. So the aim of the Gaussian blur is to blur together all the kind of color spots and blotches and stuff on someone's skin. So you don't want to do this too much where it's overly blurred like this and you don't want to do it too little either because then the frequency separation retouching won't really work. So somewhere right in the middle would be great. Uh, for this image, about 3.6 is perfect, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now we're going to make our top layer visible and have it selected. And with this layer, we're going to create our high pass filter. So to do that, we're going to go to image and apply image. And these are the settings that I use to create the high pass filter. So for the layer, we're going to select the blurred layer that we created. So in this case, it's called layer one. You can rename these layers if you like, but I'm just going to leave them as is. So layer one, then we're going to change the blending mode to subtract because we basically want to subtract the texture from the blurred layer. So we have the texture and then the color in two separate layers to be able to do this retouching. Then for the scale and the offset, you wanna have these two magical numbers, which will work every single time you're creating this high pass filter. So the scale's on two and the offset's on 128. And we're gonna hit okay. And then last but not least, all you need to do is change that layer blending mode to linear light. So you should pretty much end up with the exact same image that you opened up in the first place. And something that I like to do to just double check that I did this correctly and I didn't go too far on the Gaussian blur layer is to hold down the Alt or Option key and just press the visibility on the background layer. And that'll basically hide the two extra layers that we just created. So if nothing changes, you've done a good job with your frequency separation. So before we move on into the actual retouching, I just wanted to mention that if you don't want to go through all these steps every single time you're editing an image, I've actually made a free Photoshop action that you can download and it just applies all these steps for you to your image with just like the click of a button. So I'll leave that link down below. That's the website where I also have my Lightroom presets available, which would be awesome if you guys would like to check them out. There's also a few free ones as well. Um, but yeah, the link for the action will be linked down below. So in order to start off our retouching, I'm going to work on the color layer. So this is the layer that we applied the Gaussian blur to. And with this layer is where you can get rid of any kind of skin blotches on the skin or maybe any uh, shadows or bright highlights. And this will just make the skin tone look a lot more even underneath the texture. So I like to use the healing brush tool. I just hit the shortcut J to pop that open. And these are my settings up here if you wanna copy them. I like to use the legacy healing brush tool from Photoshop and I always change the sample to current layer. So we're gonna zoom right into the face and I actually just wanna circle a few of the things that I wanna be kind of retouching in this image just so you guys can see. So for example, in the color layer, I want to kind of smooth out these little blotches on the skin. I also want to lighten up this kind of shadowy part on the nose. Um, also even out the little eye bags here a little bit and just do a little bit of work around here in the nose. And then in the texture layer, I really want to get rid of some of these stray hairs that I find are looking pretty distracting in the image. 
So that's what we'll be working on uh, during this tutorial. So back to our blurred layer, we've got the healing brush tool and we're going to zoom in and start over here by the cheeks. So a big tip that I find is really, really helpful when it comes to retouching and not going overboard with your editing is to only make your brush as big as you need it to be. So by that, I mean, if you're going to be editing out this strand of hair, I wouldn't be editing it with a massive brush because that can cause over editing and make the image look a little bit fake. So for me, I would only make the brush just slightly bigger than that piece of hair. So whenever I'm editing anything in Photoshop, that's always kind of the rule that I go by with my brush. So I'm going to start by removing some of this red uh, blotchiness on her cheekbone and I'm going to do that by selecting a similar colored area of skin like in tone. So about here is great. And then just using small short brush strokes, I'm going to lightly brush over those little blotches to kind of blend them out into the rest of the image. I also always like to have my finger on the alt key because I like to continuously sample uh, parts of the face to continue brushing over. Sometimes if you only sample one section and then just kind of leave it and continuously retouch the rest of the face, it can look kind of unnatural. Uh, so yeah, always having your finger on the alt key is key <laughs> to having a really nice uh, retouch. So a couple of things that I'm keeping in mind while I'm editing this photo is to sample from similar looking places to where I want to brush. So for example, here on the chin, you can see this part of the chin is a little bit lighter. This one has a kind of medium tone to it and down the bottom is where it's darkest. So if I wanna get rid of this little patch here, I would select from somewhere that's the same tone. Um, instead of selecting somewhere light and brushing over somewhere where it's dark. And then for somewhere like here, the cheekbone, I really like what this light uh, section looks like. So I'm going to start by sampling in the middle and then kind of brushing my way out in a kind of circular motion just to bring that brightness out a little bit more and bring some more light into her face. And I'm also going to brush over the eye bags just a little bit as well. So if you're noticing, I am editing with quite a small brush. This is just to keep things looking um, as natural as possible. By the way, this would be a fun game if you guys want to count how many times I say the word natural in this video. Um, so yeah, using a small brush, I feel like really helps with that. If you use a big brush, you can kind of get carried away with doing too much to your image. So here I'm getting rid of that shadow on the nose by sampling from the lighter section down here and brushing that lighter section over the darker bit and that just brings in some more light. And then again here on the nose I really like the way that light is falling here so I'm going to sample and continue that pattern so we don't lose that uh, little bit of highlight which I really like. And then moving on to the forehead, I'm going to do the same method that I did with the cheek here and sample from the middle lightest section and then brush outwards in a circle. And as you can see, when we're using um, the healing brush tool in this blurred layer, it's really getting rid of a lot of imperfections already. So you really usually don't have too much to do with the texture layer afterwards, but I will still show you what we do with that. So I'm happy with how the light section of the forehead is looking. I think that's all blended in really nicely. So I'm also going to now do the outside of the forehead where the tone is a little bit darker um, and just sample and brush around there a little bit as well. And this is just kind of getting rid of those really, really fine lines. There isn't really that much to retouch here. And I'll get rid of these two little imperfections there as well. And that's pretty much done for the blurred layer. So I'll show you a before and after of what that's looking like so far. So here is the before and here is the after. So as you can see, even just doing the retouching on the blurred layer, you can call this a final image. In fact, for most of my personal work that I post online, this is pretty much where I end my retouching because 
As I said, I want it to look as natural as possible, so this is where I would call it quits. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are now going to move on to the texture layer and I'm going to show you what you can do with that. So zooming in again, we are still using our healing brush tool and we've got all the same settings as before. And the texture layer is pretty much used to be able to get rid of fine lines, wrinkles, little bumps and things like that. So again, I'm sticking by that rule of not making the brush too much bigger than what I want to get rid of. And I'm just going to sample from right next to what I'm going to paint over every single time I'm going to get rid of something. And again, I think that using the brush size as small as possible is really what helps uh, elevate retouching by not really letting you go overboard with what you're blending in the skin. So I'm just gonna get rid of just a couple of things here and there. And then just a, there's a couple of spots in the forehead I wanted to get rid of, just there. And then just two here on the nose as well. So I also like to zoom in and out quite a lot when I'm editing. It just helps you get a balance for what you're doing because you can see the full version and then also like the super zoomed in version. So again, here is a before and after of what we've been working on so far. This is the before and this is the after and I'll do one zoomed in. Before and after. So last but not least, I really want to get rid of these little stray hairs that are kind of covering her face. I find that they're looking pretty distracting in the image. So I find that editing strands of hair on the texture layer doesn't always come out that great. So something that I like to do is just make a brand new blank layer. And again, using the healing brush tool, this time I'm going to set the sample to all layers. And for me personally, I just find that it works better for me so that's why i like to do it on a blank layer and not the frequency separation texture layer so in order to get rid of the hairs we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did before and sample from really close by to where the hair is and i'm just going to get rid of it all in one go just like that and i kind of messed it up there a little bit but we can just blend it in there we go um, I like to get rid of the easy ones first because then that gives me like I can kind of think and see what else I need to do. So there are those two gone. And now I want to get rid of this one here. So I'm going to start by getting rid of this little one first. And then I also want to get rid of this shadowy bit first because it's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to sample from about here because this texture looks very similar to what's up here. You kind of want to match what you think would go, like what it would look like behind the hair. So I'm going to sample from here and just kind of paint over that. That looks pretty good. And we'll get rid of the rest of the hair. And the one up here. And we'll just fix that up that I messed up a little bit again. Perfect. So now I want to fix up this little section here because the hair ends abruptly, which, you know, doesn't look that realistic. So I'm going to make a new blank layer again with control or command shift N. And I'm going to sample from right on the edge of the face and just paint over that same section there. And I'm going to do the same with the ear up here as well. Cool. And then last but not least, we've just got these strands of hair that are here over her eye. So again, I'm going to make a new blank layer. I like to make an, a new layer for every little section that I work on, just in case I go overboard or don't do something as well and I only notice it later. It's a lot easier to just delete a layer and start again than to having to, you know, create a layer mask and erase it. And yeah, that's just the way I like to work. <laughs> So we've got a new layer and I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to start by getting rid of this one. So the way I like to get rid of hair from an eyebrow is to sample from the bottom of the eyebrow and just brush over there and just go over the entire hair. And then I'm going to do the same with this one as well. 
And then I'm going to zoom in because this little part of the eye is super tricky. So just like the edge of the face, this is just a little bit smaller and more meticulous, but we're going to do the exact same thing and sample from the very edge of the eye and just paint that over. Eh, I missed a little bit. I'll try again. Just paint that over where the same edge meets. And that looks pretty good when you zoom it out to 100%. And last but not least, I'm gonna start a new layer for this strand of hair as well. And I'm gonna do the part on the eyebrow first. And then zoom in to do the edge of the eye again. Oh, and I really messed that up. I find it's better to do things in, um, in one go with the healing brush tool. So I'm gonna try again. And that's much better this time. And then every time uh, the hair meets a new edge is kind of where I like to sample again, just to make sure it, it's continual. And then again, from the bottom of the eye, I'm gonna sample so that matches. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and make a new layer. And then with the stamp tool, I kind of want to fix this up a little bit because it looks a little, you know, retouched. <laughs> so I'm going to hit the shortcut S for the stamp tool and I'm going to use these settings. I've got a soft brush at an opacity of 20% and I have the sample set to all layers. So first I want to fix up that little sampled piece there. And then I also want to blend out this kind of darker area of the eyelashes so it looks a little bit more normal. Yeah, just there is perfect. And then we have our final retouched image. I will show you guys another before and after. This is the before and this is the after. And I'll zoom you guys in. Before and after. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. I'm so excited I finally got to record an updated retouching tutorial for you. I would also love to know in the comments what kind of retouching techniques you guys like to use. If you like frequency separation or dodging and burning or if you even do retouching to your images at all. Um, also, just in case you're wondering, in the tablet cam, which I'm also really happy is back. I'm using a Wacom Intuos in the size medium. It's a Bluetooth tablet. And I have a review video up of this on my channel if you guys are interested in checking it out. I'll leave it linked down below. But I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, you guys. I make new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.